Catherine, welcome back to the podcast. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, you're, you're talking my language, mitochondria, the mighty mitochondria. Uh, and I'm going to help everybody understand what they are, uh, as well as what algae is and why the two of them are a perfect marriage. And in fact, I don't want to sp um, spoil the uh, my drum roll, or my, but the, you'll find out how connected they are uh, through mm. plant biology and evolution. So uh, I, I've got uh, some pretty exciting stuff to share. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's start with just gonna uh, an overview on algae. What is algae? What are the main types of algae? Yeah. Well, um, a lot of people don't realize that uh, algae is actually a food. Um, it's a food crop. Um, it's not a supplement. Supplements are made in factories with high heat. Algae is no different than kale or broccoli, except it's more nutrient dense and has no anti-nutrients. So this is a spirulina farm and this is a chlorella farm. So um, I just that's why we call them bits, because they're bits of food, energy bits. And after we grow it, in which is gr it's grown in fresh water. So it's there is algae in the ocean. Ocean, but the algae that we sell and that you would sell buy at Whole Foods or Target is all grown in fresh water. Ours is triple filtered spring mountain water, so it's very safe. But it grows in fresh water. Then we air dry it into a powder without, we do not use high heat. And this is going to be very important to think about when we get to the mitochondria piece and something called superoxide dismutase, which is an enzyme because high heat kills enzymes. So all of our enzymes are intact because we don't use high heat. And after it's in a powder, we just press them into tiny tablets that again, we call bits because they're bits of nutrition. And there's so much nutrition in each one of these tiny tablets. Um, you get the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables, but without any work. Um, and we're gonna be talking about spirulina and chlorella. Spirulina is a blue green algae and chlorella is a green algae. But these little tablets, you can swallow them, you can chew them, you can uh, put them in smoothies, but basically it's spirulina and chlorella, and they're very different um, as you're gonna find out. So spirulina is a blue-green algae. It's called a blue-green algae because it has two pigments in it. A blue one called phycocyanin that has lots of healing properties and chlorophyll that you already know about. Chlorella is just a green algae. It only has one pigment in it, uh, which is called chlorophyll. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And before we do too much more, I just wanna assure you that these pigments have amazing healing properties that are quite different from one another. Blue, the blue pigment in spirulina is a water-based pigment. This is why it has properties that um, prevent the growth of blood vessels to tumors. It's called anti-angiogenesis because it's a water-based pigment. See how it disperses evenly through the water? Whereas chlorophyll, which is the only pigment in chlorella, is a fat-based pigment. See how it clumps, does not disperse? I did this experiment many times until I had this epiphany and then I, I validated it with science. Chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. That's really important to know because all of your cell membranes are, are, are fat-based and they require healthy fats to keep them healthy and permeable. So chlorophyll is one of those ways you can do it. Vitamin D, vitamin E are other ways. But um, this is why chlorophyll is so cleansing because it heals the cell wall where of course your mitochondria are based and you need to be sure that you can get nutrients in and toxins out. But anyways, both algae have the highest concentration of protein in the world. Spirulina has the most. Now, this is, uh, and all the protein is in amino acid form. Mm. Animal protein is bound up and can take up to two or three days to break down into aminos. Then you have collagen, which are clusters of aminos called peptides. But algae has individual aminos, which is one of the reasons why it gets absorbed so quickly. And the spirulina algae gets absorbed even faster than chlorella because it is a bacteria. It is a cyanobacteria, which means it has no cellulose wall. And this is going to be very important when I circle back to the history of algae and mm. um, now, spirulina also has the highest concentration of an enzyme called superoxide dismutase, also known as SOD. And as when we get to the mitochondria piece, you're going to find out SOD is one of the few antioxidants that can make its way into the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The mitochondria are unique. They have two membranes. 
all your other cells have one membrane that have these things called porins that are little channels that allow antioxidants and proteins to move in and out. But the mitochondria have a second inner membrane. And I'll explain at the end why that is. Why that is. And none of your traditional antioxidants like uh, vitamin E, vitamin C can make their way into the inner membrane, uh, which is why your mitochondria get damaged and your DNA get damaged because it's almost, there are almost no antioxidants that can get in there to stop the free radical damage from the ATP production. I'll get to that in a minute. But superoxide dismutase is one of the few that can get in there. So is uh, melatonin and so is chlorophyll. And I'll mm. talk about those in a minute. Well, let's talk about chlorophyll right now. So chlorophyll, algae has the highest chlorophyll in the world, especially chlorella, the recovery bits. See that this is the chemical composition of chlorophyll. This is the chemical comp composition of your hemoglobin. Notice that they're virtually identical. The only difference is your blood has iron in the middle and that's what carries oxygen. But, um, but the interesting thing about chlorophyll as it relates to mitochondria is that when you have chlorophyll in your body and you are exposed to red light, either sunlight or red light therapy, that, that combination recycles the CoQ10 molecule, mm. which is part of the uh, ATP production. So it, it generates its own ATP. Unbelievable. It's yeah. the cleanest way to generate ATP. Um, so it's, but the trouble is our food has no chlorophyll in any, anymore because our soils are so damaged. So the plants don't have many nutrients and they certainly don't have many much chlorophyll. And if, you know, if you're like me, I like arugula, but my arugula goes yellow after day three. It's because it yeah. didn't start with much chlorophyll. Algae has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula. It even has wow. more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll. So A, the fact that it's cleansing to your cells, B, the fact that it um, uh, will is can get into the mitochondria to stop that free radical damage and generates its own ATP, man, that's, that's a magic combination, right? 